by the name of Fatima Mahjoub. Long story short, Fatima Mahjoub is an Egyptian academic, writer, professor. She studied in Egypt and then went to England, pursued her education there. And after that, she went to the United States. I believe she studied in Houston, got a PhD in English literature, went back to Egypt. She set up an institute to uh, educate, especially women, and is seen as uh, quite the hero, if you like, among the Islamist groups uh, in Egypt. One of her most important accomplishments, perhaps her magnum opus, is an encyclopedia called al mawsu'atu al-Dhahabiyya, the golden encyclopedia. And being an encyclopedia means that she talks about pretty much everything. I'm not sure how many volumes it is, maybe 30, maybe 40 volumes. It's a massive work. And you can tell she's put in a lot of effort. So, being an encyclopedia of Islamic sciences, surely she would talk about the likes of Fatima al Zahra, right? And the wives of the Prophet. I mean, these are important discussions. And if you're going to write an encyclopedia, then these would be among the first few topics that you would put in there. And sure enough, when she speaks about Aisha, for instance, she dedicates, I'm not sure how many, but dozens and dozens of pages to her. Her life, her teachings, what she did, her struggles, and her quotes, her version of history about the Holy Prophet the fact that she was the youngest when she married the Prophet, the fact that she outlived all of the other wives, uh, meant that she had uh, great access, not so much to the Prophet that was superior to all of the other wives, but she had uh, created for herself a position where she became the reference. Anybody who wants to know anything about the Prophet for almost uh, 80 or 90 years, they would go to Aisha. And so there's a lot of discussions, naturally, as you, as you would expect. Okay, beautiful. Well, Surely, there'd be something comparable to that about Fatima to Zahra. I remember I said this in a majlis uh, in the United States. And I prefaced this example by saying that I believe that Ma Fatima Mahjoub should have statues erected in her honor in Shia communities. When it comes to Fatima to Zahra, there's two paragraphs, that's it. And in those two paragraphs, she, and I'm paraphrasing, she says something along the lines of, yes, Fatima uh, got married when she was too young, and as a result of that, marital issues came up between her and her husband. They were really never on good terms because of the age difference between Fatima al Zahra and Amir al-Mu'mineen. Also, she did have a tendency for an attachment toward the material possessions of this dunya that was rather unusual, which is why she went to war with the Khalifa of her time over a piece of land. That's it. Now why I said that we should have statues erected for Fatima Mahjoub and people like her is to remind ourselves how people of this caliber are so shameless and yet they do what they do with absolute disregard for what others say. They insist on putting forth their own narrative, their own twisted and corrupted version of history in the most unabashed manner. Whereas me, 
the Shia, the so-called Shia, who claims to be a follower of Fatima to Zahra, have done nothing in her support, have done nothing in order to undo this damage and to fix this narrative. A narrative, by the way, that is more common than you might think. Ibn Uthaymeen actually says that Fatima was a little obsessed with the material world. She cared too much, which is why she went and got into this uh, protruded, protracted uh, legal fight against the Khalifa over a piece of land. I mean, how much is a piece of land really worth? Was it worth all the trouble? Was it worth uh, doing what she did? Ibn Uthaymeen, who was a senior uh, mufti in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And Ibn Uthaymeen took this and borrowed this idea from Ibn Taymiyyah himself, Al-Harrani. Ibn Taymiyyah clearly says in his book Minhaj al-Sunnah, which is the gospel of many nawasib and enemies of the Ahlul Bayt السلام, he says in his book that Fatima was obsessed with material possessions and she went and got into this legal dispute with the Khalifa over a piece of land. When in fact we know that Fatima couldn't care less about material possessions. How could she? God forbid, God forbid. How could this word be used to describe her obsessed with material possessions? When Fatima to Zahra lived in her father's lifetime when the Prophet was the king of that entire region. And she lived in conditions of utmost poverty. She would go for days without food, herself and her children. How could Fatima be obsessed with material possessions when she herself says that I only love three things in this world of yours? Quran, to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to look in the face of my father Rasulullah Qira'atu kitab Allah wa-nadaru fi wajhi Rasulullah In other words, the only thing I care about in this world is my father. It is God's messenger. How could Fatima to Zahra be obsessed with the material world, with worldly possessions? Fatima was as the Holy Prophet described her, Hawra'un in She was a damsel in the form of a human being. Fatima 